Well, good Thursday morning. Today is Thursday, September 10th, and this is our morning devotion, Growing Closer, a devotion time to design to assist in our efforts to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I would like to begin this morning uh, by answering a question from last night's Sweet Soul Music. We were looking at the 118th Psalm and talked about how that psalm was one that was sung at uh, the festival times, and the people, when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, sang one of the verses there. And so the question was, when Jesus was riding on the donkey, and all these people are praising him and singing praises, then the next day they're yelling, crucify him, what happened? Why did the people turn on him? Was it a different group of people? I don't believe it was a different group of people. From what we can tell, uh, part of the, the reason there was that Jesus had been before the uh, Sanhedrin, before the 70 of the Jewish leaders, and he had been taken and tried, and people's opinions changed very quickly once he had been accused of these things and once the Jewish leadership had made their stand. Most people, because of some scripture, believe that the Jewish leaders bribed the people uh, to yell out, crucify him. Uh, but a good bit of it, I'm sure that was true, but a good bit of it was what we know as hysterical contagion. If you've ever taken any human uh, communications courses or psychology courses, you know people have a tendency to go along with the crowds. I'm going to be honest with you. I think a good bit of that is what we are seeing in some of the uh, protesting and rioting that we see in America uh, today. Uh, of course, we're not going to get in that political side there, but uh, people have a tendency to join in uh, where their significant others are, and when their leadership uh, changed their or uh, established their view toward Jesus, the, the people went along with it. And uh, I mean, not even the disciples stuck with Jesus, if you remember that. So that's, that's pretty, pretty, uh, a pretty uh, sure statement there. Well, today I want to answer some more questions that deal with the origin and nature of angels. I did not expect to get as many questions as I have gotten on angels. And right now, what I would like to do is answer these questions today. But then I had a very good question that I do think we probably ought to look at. One is on the angel of the Lord, which is a theophany. You say, well, what is that? Well, that is uh, the pre-incarnate Christ appearing in the Old Testament. So we probably want to look at that. And then the other question that I said that I would cover is Satan and the angelic rebellion. And so what I will do is I will do one of those tomorrow and one Monday. Then I will move on. I have a devotion that I have prepared for this week on praise, and uh, I want to look at that for sure next week. So, but keep on sending your questions, and uh, if they, uh, if I need to give an entire devotion time to it, we will do that. So today, let's look at angels and answer some questions about the origin and the nature of angels today. Uh, you know, there's a whole group of people out there who have gone crazy over angels. Uh, uh, they have uh, angel mania, if you will. Uh, the study of angel, angelology, is out there, and so much of it is outside Scripture. I want to say again and again and again that you do not become an angel when you die. You do not get your wings, and you are not sent back here to earth to watch over your family and those that you left behind. And I'll, uh, I'm not sure where people got a lot of this stuff, but it, they didn't get it from the Bible. And I think it's, uh, somebody said, well, the other day, well, that's okay. It just makes them feel better. It makes people feel better. Well, look, uh, but if you're wrong, if you're deceived, uh, that's the wrong way to feel better. We feel better when we know the truth. Uh, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, is what Jesus said. And that's certainly where we want to be. So first of all, I would say to you that angels are created beings. Uh, we look in Genesis chapter 1, and it states that God created all things on earth. And since man was not present to behold the creative act, the fact of man's creation is a matter of revelation. You see, this is where science falls short. 
science uh, has, there's a, such a thing as scientific observation. There was nobody there when the world was created. There was nobody there when man was created. And so it's sort of hard to report on that. You have to develop hypotheses from the evidence that you do have, but there was no one there to observe. Uh, there is no observable fact there. It's a matter of revelation. And then it's a matter of understanding that revelation and an interpretation of that revelation we receive. And the creation of man was a matter of God's revelation in Genesis when we read the creation account. And the creation of angels are also uh, a, a matter of God's disclosure, if you will. In Psalm 148, verses 2 through 5, we read a little bit about the angels and their creation. It says, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. So that tells us that along with the stars and the sun and the moon, the heavenly expanses, angels are a product of God's creation. As a matter of fact, when you read 1 Timothy chapter 6, 15, uh, you, you come to a good understanding there. It says, he will manifest in his own time, he who is blessed and the only potentate, the King of kings, Lord of lords. That's to say that God is the only one that has immortality. And so angels had to be created. God is the one who spoke into existence. Most of you are very familiar with uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 where Jesus is referred to as the agent of creation. He is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. Logically, that would include angels. The eternal Word acted as God's creative agent. And Paul specifically talks about this in Colossians chapter 1, in verse 16, when he says, for by him, talking about Jesus, for by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. So angels find their origin in Christ and they depend upon Christ for their continuance and their welfare. He is their sovereign. Uh, the next question that came along was, well, when were angels created? We got a little bit of hint of that in that uh, first passage that we read, but they were created before man and before the earth because they had uh, fallen before you get to chapter 3 of Genesis. And the scripture implies that angels were all created at the same time. But when we read in the book of Job, uh, Job tells us that the angels were already on, on the scene to celebrate when the earth was created. If you look at verse 4, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Down to verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. That's a reference to the angels. All the angels are the sons of God's way it's translated in the New King James Version. He said, Job wasn't there when the earth was formed, but the angels were. And evidently, they were having a good time, too, because it says they uh, celebrated together and they shouted for joy. Um, therefore, the angels were apparently made before the third day of the creation week, the day when God gathered all the waters and seas and dry land appeared uh, there. So uh, next question, how many angels are there? How many angels are there? Well, no precise count is given in the Bible, but there's a lot of evidence. There's, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, when an angel came to minister to, to Jesus as he prayed in Gethsemane, he stopped his uh, disciples from fighting them. And you'll remember there in Matthew 26, he said, do you not think that I could pray to my father and he would provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? Now, a lead, that, that's enough for every disciple to have his own legion. Um, but a typical Roman legion numbered three to 6,000 men. So often the same number uh, is there. So the total of, total of angels mentioned here are 144,000 at least, or, or could be that many. But uh, that I, we don't know. I, there are many more than that as we continue to look at other areas in the Bible. Uh, I, I thought of this one in Matthew 18.10 when somebody was asking, does everybody have their own angel? 
Matthew 18.10 implies that every child has at least two of them. Look at Matthew 18.10. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels, plural, always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Their angels, possessive there, so it looks like every child has at least a couple of angels. I don't know if we can wear them out. Uh, my mom used to accuse me of taking care and wearing out several uh, of God's guardian angels, if you would uh, put it that way. Hebrews, um, when we look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, it says there was innumerable company of angels. Uh, innumerable angels are millions of, or myriads is another word. It's a form of the Greek word. Is The Greek word is myriad. And uh, that could mean 10,000 or a vast number, more and more and more. And we, we look in Psalm 68 and verse 17, the chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. And over in Daniel chapter 7, uh, we see Daniel said a thousand thousands to minister to him. So the, the same language uh, is used over in Revelation. When we're looking in Revelation, Revelation says, I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and the uh, living creatures and elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000s 10, and thousands of thousands. That's a lot. If you take that literally, there would be a hundred million of them. And in using such numbers, I believe that the Bible is just simply expressing a large host, which is probably the only God is the only one that knows their number. And I say that God's the only one because the Bible tells us in Matthew 10 that he knows the number of hairs on our head. Now, that's an easy count for some people. It's more difficult for others. Then he's, but he's named all the stars. He's, there's not, and he says there's not one of them that is missing. And if he's calculated the total of stars and hairs on heads, and certainly he's got the number of angels tallied. And it's more than enough for us. Uh, we can find comfort in that. The next question came along was, has God created any more angels since then? Now, I, I can't find any biblical reason to believe that he has. And apparently, there's no reduction in number either because it doesn't look like the angels die. But the fallen angels were dismissed. And we'll talk about that the day that we talk about the satanic rebellion and the angels that fell. But according to Jesus' statement, angels don't marry and angels don't procreate like people do. Uh, there's that uh, great passage, and some people hate this passage because of some of what it says. But look at it. It says, Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. And Jesus answered and said to him, You are mistaken, not knowing the Scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. And so um, angels are immortal, so there's no increase or decrease. And we have uh, many angels today, as many today as we've ever had. Now, I know what's going to happen. Somebody's going to look at the first part of that verse, and I'm going to get a question about that marriage and, and seven wives or seven husbands and all that. Uh, let's don't go there right now. Okay, that, that's interesting, but it's trivial stuff. Okay, what's the purpose of angels? Angels were made in Christ and through Christ and for Christ. Remember that verse we looked at a few minutes ago? Uh, that verse in Colossians 1.16, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. So Christ was the cause. Christ was the cause of all these things. And so he is the purpose for their very existence. All created things, he is, uh, he is the where, he is the from, he is the how, he is the why, uh, he is the king and master. So why we were born is the same reason as why we're still kept alive, and that reason is all wrapped up in the will and the pleasure of God. And the will of God is a whole different subject. Angels were created for us. But why would God create these troops of heavenly messengers when he certainly doesn't need them? Um, as Calvin, John Calvin, the great reformer said, whenever he pleases, he passes them by and performs his own work by a single nod. 
So Calvin came to this conclusion that in creating angels, God must have had our interest in mind. He must have employed them just to help in our weaknesses. And that goes back to where we started when we started studying in angels in Hebrews 1.14. We keep coming back to that, that angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. So angels are here for us. I think I have time for one more, and then we'll close out this morning. And the, that is the question, well, where do angels reside? Well, <laughs> the good angels, um, the ones that God, that are gods that we call angels, of course, the bad angels, Satan's, or we call demons, but the good angels call heaven their home. And we see that especially in the Gospels and the book of the Revelation. You remember that when Jesus in, is, is in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, then an angel appeared to him from heaven. And uh, you'll remember that even after that, it, Jesus, God is talking and he says, heaven is my home. Uh, heaven is my throne. So heaven is their dwelling place because angels belong exclusively to God. And the best definition of heaven is God's dwelling place. And God says in Isaiah 66, 1, this is where uh, angels work and live. If you tend to picture angels as going through life, lounging on fluffy clouds and playing harps and cruising from star to star, you've missed the truth. It's because they belong to God. Jesus specifically referred to them as God's angels. He, in Luke 12, 8, he says, the angels of God. Uh, we need to remember that they belong to God. They are ministering servants to us, but they belong to God. They are the angels of God. And uh, they, you'll remember that um, uh, he promised his disciples that they would see heaven open up and the angels of God ascending and descending upon him. I don't know that I looked that scripture up for you. No, I did not. Um, and so, but Jesus is God, and he referred to the angels as belonging to himself. So the holy angels, the good angels, belong to God in the Bible and therefore to his heaven. Well, I answered a lot of questions, a lot of your questions on angels. Uh, there were more that I did not get to, and I don't know that I will have time to get to them. We're going to look tomorrow at the theophany, and then we will look Monday at that battle between uh, the, the angels and and with the others. But I have a slide here for you if you want to read and you want to catch up on some stuff. So let me put this up here on the screen. Let me get me out of the way again. And you can write down these books. Uh, uh, and the Angels Were Silent, Max Licato, Angels, Elect and Evil, Fred C. Dickinson, Every Angel in the Bible, Larry Richards, The Glory of Heaven, The Truth About Heaven, Angels and Eternal Life, John MacArthur. That's, that's my favorite one, to be honest. And then David Jeremiah, what the Bible says about angels. So I'll leave that up while I pray. And um, then you can write those down if you want to get one of those books. Father, we thank you so much for time in your word this morning as we learn about the ministering spirits that you have sent uh, to us uh, to assist us as we move through this life before we join you in eternity forever and ever. I pray that your Holy Spirit would Help us to uh, understand that he would be our teacher and would make personal application of the truths that we find in your word for each and every person. We love you and we thank you for the privilege of opening your book. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, I don't know if you've had long enough to get that or not, but we certainly want to see uh, who is with us today. Uh, which, by the way, I have noticed that while there were a few that really liked angels, that our, our numbers have fallen off uh, substantially, and also the number of shares. If we're going to get out there, I really need you to share our uh, videos. Now, if you're ashamed of me, don't share it, but if, you've, if it's been helpful uh, and it's helpful to you, please share these devotions each morning because the more you share, the further the reach goes. For instance, we have two or three shares. We'll only have a reach of 100 or so. But if we get up there 10 and 15 shares like we did some days, we get over 1,000 in the reach. And so it helps us an awful lot when you do that. Uh, okay, you've had time to look at that. Let me take it off and let me come back here and see who all has joined us today. And hopefully we'll have our uh, time to speak to you. Cheryl, good to have you with us this morning. And Tanya, I hope that answered the questions there for you that you had. Now, not just the angels, but the one on the Hosanna 
Uh, okay, Rachel Black, good morning to you. John and Gina, always good to see you. Uh, Shelly, she had she had uh, messaged me right before we started, said, when do you start the countdown? And it was about 10 seconds before I started the countdown. Hello, my sweet wife. She's at the church early this morning. I'm still at the house. Sheena, Sheena, per, per year, good morning. I didn't see Brian yesterday, I don't think, Sheena, uh, but it's good to see you. Good morning, Philip Johnson. Uh, glad to have you with us, and I hope that you are, are feeling well. And uh, so Lori's got just a few more days before she will be home, and I know she'll take good care of you. Uh, Carol, let's see. Valerie and Eddie Pride more. Good to see you on here, Carol. Alan uh, Oglesby, I hope that you, I know you had the surgery yesterday. Uh, for you to be on watching this morning, you either are uh, doing very well or you are a very disciplined person, but it's good to see you on this morning. Uh, Rick Pulsifer, good to see you. And Dorothy Nelson, always glad to, to have you on here. Richard, glad that you have joined us. There's Carol. Uh, good to see that you're with us today. Yeah, prayers do really work, and I think God is good. Good morning, Betty and Brian. Glad that you are with us today. And Lisa, good to see you with us. Uh, glad that you're able to make it. <clears throat> Danny and Dixie, faithful, faithful. Thank you so much, and thank you for the encouragement that you're always sending my way. We, we need it. We appreciate it. I hope we never take for granted the encouraging words of, of all of you people. Good morning, Lori. I hope that you have a better day today than you had yesterday. Good morning over to the Carolinas. It's good to see you. Uh, and uh, hope that things are going well with you over in the Carolinas. You and Robin uh, both over there. And well, Lisa, you're in the Carolinas too. Uh, yeah, Lisa, that's what Shelley says, that John Pierce has more than two angels. Um, uh, he's he's gone through at least that many. I know when God goes to hand out assignments to go watch over somebody, I'm sure they say, oh, please, not John. Uh, but I, I appreciate I'm glad that he is. Oh, joke, joke, joke. Uh, good morning, Diane. Uh, it's interesting to contemplate angels having free will. And uh, Rick, you come to that because of Lucifer. Uh, that you talk about contemplation. There's a lot of thinking that goes into that, and and I'm not sure exactly where I fall on that. Uh, but the whole that's that's like asking the question: Did God create evil? Um, in so many ways, you look at it, and if you say, "Well, nothing exists without God's permission," then you have to say yes. But you know, I watched some of Ravi Zacharias and. Uh, and some of these other guys, as they debate that whole thing, R.C. Sproul, they have a lot of that stuff on uh, YouTube. If you really want to get into that, it's a it's above my uh, above my ability to comprehend some of the stuff they say. Some of it I just don't understand. I just have to accept. Uh, pray for you today, Diane. We will do so. Uh, Replying, Diane, uh, he is an angel in blue. <laughs> well, we we call a lot of people angels that aren't angels, aren't we? Uh, I remember when they used to have that group of uh, guys wearing the berets, the, um, the guardian angels that were going around doing those things. But uh, they God uses a lot of humans in protective ways and ministering ways. But of course, we know they're not literal angels. They are figurative angels. Well, good to see you all on here. Please, if this has been helpful or if it's been interesting for you, please share it. Uh, give us a few thumbs up, a little bit of hearts or something like that. Let us know that you're there. Uh, if, if you think it's helpful for others, please share it with them. Remember, you're in our hearts. You're on our mind. When I see your name or your name comes to my mind, I pray for you. And we want you to know that we love you and we appreciate you oh so much. Tomorrow morning, a theophany, and that is the angel of the Lord when Christ appeared in the Old Testament before his incarnation. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Bye-bye.